one second here mm -hmm. before we get totally started. Okay, now what'd you say? Um, I see that you're on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Are you on any other social media channels? Let's see. I mean, I have a Snapchat. Um, I haven't really been focusing a whole lot there. Um, yeah. I might do a post every other day there. Um, but really, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube are maybe the main three that I'm really focusing on. You know, I didn't even do social media two years ago at all. Yeah. So, you know, first I took on the Facebook challenge, you know, to figure it out and see how to, how to really use it. And then I did Instagram, you know, and tried to figure that out. And now I'm on YouTube. And so I've been kind of going through each one, trying to figure out how to use it, you know, how it really works and what it's all about. Yeah. And so I just, that's where I'm at in the cycle. I haven't got to Twitter. I haven't got to, you know, really, I mean, I understand how to use Snapchat. Like I get it. I know what, I know what's going on there with the filters and the ads. I just haven't put any time or energy there yet. I will as soon as I, you know, like I'll do one and I'll get to a good comfortable place with what I'm doing there and, you know, what direction I'm going and my following and all that and kind of figure it out and then I'll go to another one. So yeah. right now I'm really focusing on YouTube and I really want to grow there the most right now because I really, I mean, that's one of the best places to, uh, to really grow and uh, you know, opportunity to really you know do some do some things. I mean, all of them are in their own way. Right. Um, have you noticed a change in your business since you focused on social media? Oh, absolutely. I mean, as far as real estate goes, now we're, we're now I do two different things. I'm sure you notice. You know, I have the real my real estate business. You know, I'm a single agent. I do a million a year in uh, Alabama, and then I have the coaching slash speaking entrepreneurial. You know, writer, author, all that stuff. That's mm -hmm. kind of two different things. So um, I've built my entire or you know 95 percent of the speaking writing coaching you know all that on social media i just started that about this time last year so i've only been in in that space for about a year yeah and um you know i mean wow i mean total like tremendous growth and everybody loves my message and is really resonating and I can really see where this thing's going to be really big you know here in a few years now right. on the real estate side see I got I didn't do social media I built my business without it right. and then when I got into writing and speaking and then I started using it because I thought, well, you know, that's how you have to do it nowadays in that space. And so that when I when I learned how to use social media, it, going that at, going that route, then I turned around and I said, wow, I could actually do all that. Okay, I'm going to use that stuff with my real. I'm going to you you know use it for my real estate business as well. Right. And so. Yeah, it's it's been really good, uh, you know, because I already had a huge database, and so all social media really did for me was just to kind of another avenue to tackle that database with, you know, and provide value, you know, to that audience that already knew me and already d did business with me or you know whatever. Right. Um. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely helped. Have you? Do you think? through real estate have been a result from social media because they know I can trust you more? Oh, I know they have. Yeah, I mean, people people yeah. have told me that, hey, I see you on Facebook. That's why I'm calling you. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, I've had several deals. I mean, it's, it's paid for itself over and over and over again as far as how much money I've spent. Yeah. Um, you know, it almost makes me want to really kind of double down and put more money into it. Right. Uh, you know, but... Um, um, it hasn't been like a flurry of deals, but you know, 
maybe every other month or so, I'll get something where somebody said they saw me on Facebook. But see, I've only been doing this for about a year now. Um, right. And I've only really been hardcore with my real estate business on Facebook for about six months. And so I really think that the best is kind of yet to come. I really think that, you know, if I just can continue being consistent with what I'm doing, just providing yeah. value, because I, I don't I don't get leads. Like I don't like I don't do the whole click funnel, you know, contact information for leads deal. Um, I just don't do that. I just I feel like that's a whole nother strategy. Sure. I feel like what I do is just provide value with here's market information, here's a good place to eat, here's this, here's that. And I, I believe I impact more people that way. Everybody sees an ad where they can click and put their contact information in. That's like that looks like a robot. You know, yeah. like nobody really remembers who posted that. Right. But, but my posts are more about uh, local events, things going on, list cool listings, new new listings of mine, sales I've made, market information, and I'm not asking them to give me their contact information on any of it. And right. so they actually remember who I am uh, with that strategy. And so if you if you do a click funnel type deal. You know, you, you're going to get leads. They're going to put their stuff in. You're going to get those leads. Then you can then contact them and, and impact their life from there, um, which is which is a great. That's not a bad strategy. I mean, it, it's not. It's just a different strategy than what I do because I think that if I get 500 likes and 43 comments on something that you know about a really cool new place to eat in the area. I think that I impacted more lives than, you know, an ad with something to click and give me their contact information. I think the best strategy may be to do a little bit of both, uh -huh. you know, uh, value ads and funnel ads. Uh -huh. um, you know, I think maybe the best is to maybe do a little both because then they recognize you with the value ads. Then they see, oh, you have a listing. You want to learn more about it. They're more apt to kind of go forward with giving you their contact information. There's a lot of different ways to look at it, you know? Right. Um, how much money do you put into this? Do you, do you have an assistant helps you post or do you, do you um, advertise any of your posts? Do you push them to advertise or what I do. I do all my advertising on my own um, on social media. Uh, I put, I'm, I'm in charge now. Let's see. My assistant does post a little bit on uh, my real estate Facebook business page, but you know that's one of many, many you know channels that I have to post. I mean, I do a YouTube video every day. I do Instagram every day. I do post in different groups that I run every day. Um, you know, my personal page. Uh, you know, so there's just a lot going on, and then you got store. And then you got stories you have to keep up with. Right. So there's a lot going on, but I do it all. Um, but I spend, I spend maybe, I spend probably uh, maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred a week on the speaking and coaching, advertising on Facebook and Instagram. And then I probably spend 500 a week on real estate related um, content. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably spending about two grand or so a week on Facebook, which when you do the Facebook ad, it also bleeds over into Instagram because they own each other. So when you do a Facebook ad, you know, it'll be on Instagram too, unless you opt out of it being on Instagram as well. So I'll play around with that. Some of them I'll do just on Facebook or some Facebook and Instagram. It just kind of, just kind of depends, but maybe 1500 on the speaking and inspirational stuff. Cause I'm still trying to build that. I mean, I'm in the building stages of that business sure. and I've already built the real estate business. So I spent about 500 on that a week, just, keeping my name in front of all those people. Are you editing your YouTube videos yourself? I edit maybe half of them myself. And then I have a, a guy that I hired to follow me around with a camera. Ah, and, okay. 
and he edits he he does i have the daily grind show which is like a reality type thing and, yeah. and he edits those and then he edits some of my rants but um i just bought a camera last week and i've really been enjoying the videoing myself and um i did one this morning um uh, make a or how to make a hundred thousand in your first year in real estate i recorded it yesterday and edited it myself so, you know, I like yeah. that. I like that side of it too. I mean, I'm just, I just like the, I like all angles of it, and I'm probably trying to do too much, but um, I just have so much creative stuff in my head, yeah. and it's only me. You know, even even Blake, he does a really good job, but it's not exactly how I would do it sometimes. Sure. And I just let him do his thing because he's amazing. He's super talented. He does a really good job. But sometimes there's certain things that I want to be a certain way, and there nobody else is going to do that but me, you know. Right. And so it's kind of tough, you know, on that angle. But yeah, I edit maybe half of them, and he edits the other. It's really impressive. So you have, do you have any? If, if a realtor asks you, or another agent asks you, you know what? If they have nothing, if they don't know what they're doing at all, you know, like what would be like your your number one tip on how to get started? Um, besides just getting started, what's your first like tactical tip that they can actually put into use? For what? For who? For if, I, if another agent came up to you and they said, mm -hmm. hey, you're killing it. You're doing such a great job. I feel so overwhelmed. Would your number one tip be maybe to start on just one platform and focus on one platform like you did? Well, or? I'll be honest with you because I, I didn't do real, I didn't do any social media until I was 15 years in the business. Yeah. So I built my entire business with voice to voice contact over the phone, cold calling property owners. So, and then through that, I built the database. And now that I'm on top and I have this database, now I can utilize social media to like put that whole situation on steroids. Right. So, you know, my tip, and I said this in my 100,000 in your first year video, is don't do any heavy social media stuff your first year. Like your first year needs to be making, creating lifelong relationships with property owners in your area. That's where it needs to start. And then I said, save all the heavy, like it's okay to post. It's okay to like post stuff and try things out and stuff, but don't focus on it. See too many new agents think that social media is what's going to like, you know, flip their business on fire. Gotcha. And it's not social media to me for real estate is branding. It's not, it's not leads. Like you get, you can get leads and that's great. But it's the conversations that lead to all the closings. Right. And so you have to focus there first. But if I were to give advice, I would say, you know, just post here and there. Don't don't depend on it. You know, build your database up. And then once you build your database up for a while, then start using social media against that database to continue building your brand with them. But I would say that, um, you know, you have a Facebook profile already. Everybody does. <clears throat> you know, start a business page for your real estate business, you know, and just maybe start posting there, you know, three times a week or every day, if you know, once a day if you want to. Nobody is really seeing those posts on business pages unless, right. unless you boost them or run a Facebook ad. I mean, you know, they're just not. Yeah. So, you know, you have to spend money. So you're really not getting anywhere with that. But it's good to go ahead and have the, the business page in place and yeah. go ahead and have some posts happening because six years down the road, when you do start doing Facebook ads and stuff, you know, people can look at your page and see that there's been activity for the past couple months, six months, and they'll know that you haven't been just sitting around. It's kind of a proof that you've been busy, that you've been working and stuff like that. So I think it's important to, you know, have it, but don't focus or depend on it to be like that secret, you know, key that's going to blow you up, you know? are rising above the competition in your area because of your social media presence? 
Yeah, I do. I do because because I took my time with it and I actually learned how to use it. And and um, I didn't just start see because I see a lot of new agents just posting listings and they're doing they're doing live videos where they're showing you the bathroom and under and under the tables and stuff and it's so boring and I think and I never did that I've never went live and showed a listing and showed like the bathroom and stuff I think when um, people go live that they should be showing like the unique uh, things about the property like the view if it's on the water or the mountains or you know the cool den but don't show every little corner of the house and walk through and it's just you're looking at a wall and people and they're like and this is the wall and over here is the floor and, you know it just it's just not it's just not like it's not doing anything good so I didn't ever do any of that what I did was is I didn't even care about social media and I just focused on that voice to voice relationship building building, you know, brand. And then when I learned how to use, it was, it was an accident. Like I learned how to use social media because I wanted to build a different business. And then because I learned how to use social media, I was like, oh my gosh, I can use this in my real estate business and start like really crushing it. So now like I built a database of about 12,000 people and over the last 15 years. And I can create a custom audience in Facebook with those 12,000 people and it found 8,600 of them that had profiles linked to that email. And so now I have a custom audience of 8,600 people that already know who I am that now whenever I do a Facebook ad or boost a post, I can boost it directly to those people. And now like they already know me, but now they're seeing me on Facebook every single day you know, with some cool thing about a listing or a place to eat or, you know, an event or, you know, just hi, how are you doing or about the weather or whatever's going on, you know? And so, yeah, absolutely. Because I think there may be some people in that 12,000 or the 8,600 that I found that, you know, I can't call 8,600 people, you know, every month, you know, or even every year. I mean, I don't even, right. I mean, you know, there's just too many people to keep up with. So <clears throat> the Facebook thing actually is just another way for me to stay in, stay in front of them where they actually... Um, it's like, it's like if I haven't called them and stayed in touch, you know, it's like, this is just another way for them yeah. to say, wow, Ricky's really doing it. You know, right. I, I need to, I need to, you know, he's still my guy. He, I haven't talked to him, but he's still my guy, you know, when I decide to do something. Right. And so yeah. I think yep. that it has definitely kept some people, um, in tune with me and has kept people like in my corner and me as their agent when they decide to do something that might, may have decided to use a different agent, um, at some point. Right. Yeah. So, def so definitely, I think it's really, I mean, to be honest, I was already above all the competition before I did social yep. media. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's definitely put me in a different spot, and I'm, and you know, it's like hard because what's the ROI? Because I'm spending 500 a week, 2,000 a month. It's like, man, am I throwing the money away? But every time I get a call, or every time I see like on a post that I boosted to my uh, clients, and somebody, you know, a client, you know, comments under there about how much I helped them through a transaction, and how anybody, you know, that wants to do anything should call me. It's like I'm boosting a post they say that under one of my posts and it's still getting boosted to other people and right. they see that and they're like, man, you know, look at all the people he's helped.